So welcome uh, to the first of my videos on scientific computing in C++. Some of these videos will be strictly learning C++. Uh, some of them will be uh, coding examples or learning important uh, libraries like Eigen. Um, and others might be focused on understanding topics in numerical analysis or algorithms. Today we are going to get our first program to run and explore uh, a few important variable types. Note that this isn't a series to get you into C++ uh, for general purpose programming. Uh, here we will focus on numerical computing, so I will cover topics as needed uh, for the series. So I'm going to run this series by using code blocks. If you want to follow along uh, while using code blocks, simply go to codeblocks.org. You're going to want to go to downloads, then follow uh, the download the binary uh, release link here. From here, pick your uh, operating system. Uh, for me, that's Windows, so going here. So here you're going to download the executable uh, code blocks 20.03 or whichever numbers uh, end up being relevant for when you look at this video, uh, followed by the mingw-setup.exe uh, version of the download. This version of the download includes the GCC compiler, uh, so that's gonna make our life a lot easier. So once this is installed, you can go to create a new project. You're going to want to click uh, console application for what we're gonna do. Um, make sure it's set on C++ and give it a project title. So I'm gonna call this example uh, one uh, to keep the naming uh, consistent throughout the series. And then we're gonna wanna make sure that the right compiler is selected. Uh, so we want the GNU GCC compiler. So here uh, on the left-hand side, you're gonna see sources. So expanding this list, we can go to main.cpp. And this is our first instance of our code. So next for future purposes, we are going to enable a few compiler settings. So go to settings and then to compiler. We are going to want to enable uh, whichever is the most recent C++ standard that comes with your download. For me, uh, that's C++ 11. And then going further down, uh, this will be more useful for future videos when we're dealing with libraries. Uh, we are going to want to include uh, optimization. So we're just gonna set this to optimize fully for speed, uh, dash zero three, just click this box here um, and then click okay. Okay, so here we are, we have our first program with a hello world uh, ready to go for us. So let's quickly change this to hello YouTube. Okay, and then we can uh, save that. And just to uh, give you uh, a look, we can then go here to build it or to compile it tells us zero error errors down here, and then up here we can do run, and then out pops hello YouTube uh, to a console. So now let's break down what's actually going on here um, in the code. The first line we see here is a hashtag include uh, IO stream. For all intents and purposes, this is a lot like uh, Python when you're importing something like NumPy. So what's going on here is that the line with the hashtag symbol is a directive to something called the preprocessor that tells it to include, in our case, a section of the standard C++ code, which is called a header. So that is what IOStream is. It's a header, which gives you the ability to perform input and output operations. So this includes, for example, this Cout, which allows us to print things uh, to the console. Next, we have uh, using namespace std here. This will allow us to use things uh, from the C++ uh, standard without putting um, std uh, and then two uh, colons uh, in front of the things we want to use from the standard library. So for example, uh, C out comes from the standard library. So without using namespace std, we would have to write the uh, this statement for C++ in the following way. 
But uh, to make our lives a little bit easier, we're going to use uh, namespace uh, std here, and so we don't need this. So this can be bad programming practice if you're using a lot of different libraries uh, with potential uh, identical names uh, for different functions. Uh, but for us, this will be fine for now. Next, you'll note uh, int main. This line is a special uh, declaration in C++. Uh, we will get to functions in more detail later, but when we run our code, our program begins uh, by locating uh, the main function uh, and then executes the code within the main function. So this function controls your code. You'll note that after main, we have curly braces and all the way at the bottom here, we have another curly brace. This tells us the beginning and end of the main function. Next, we have our C out followed by a less than uh, less than uh, sign, uh, which is called the insertion operator. Uh, and then hello YouTube uh, inside quotation marks. And then also another insertion operator and then end L followed by a semicolon. So there's definitely a lot to unpack here. Um, C out stands for character output. Uh, and it's our usual way of printing something uh, to the screen or to the console as our program runs. The insertion operator uh, tells C++ uh, that what follows should be printed. We wrote inside quotations, hello YouTube, uh, which is what we wanted to output. Finally, afterwards, we have this end L, which stands for end line. It's mostly just to keep the uh, output uh, looking clean. So notice that our command or our statement here ended in a semicolon. Every C++ uh, statement ends in a semicolon. If we wanted to say, for example, add a comment, we would just uh, add two forward slashes here to get uh, a comment line. And then we could just add whatever text we wanted to uh, uh, let ourselves know in the future or let someone else know in the future when they're reading our code. So last but not least, we have return zero. Uh, you don't need to uh, worry too much about that. The program wouldn't change if we just deleted it. But basically what's going to happen here is that if our program executes uh, correctly um, or as intended, it will output return zero um, at the end of the execution, uh, letting us know that everything went okay. Okay, so now we have a basic setup here. Let's introduce how to do uh, a bit of math. To do that, we first need to introduce some data types uh, that will be useful for us. The most common numerical data types uh, you will look at initially will be integers and real numbers. To declare an integer, uh, you simply write int space, then you would give it a name, I'll call mine a, then you could you could finish this statement by adding um, a semicolon and then you could assign it a value later or we could give it, for example, the value of one. We could go ahead and declare a few more here. So let's do int b is equal to two and int c is equal to five. From here, we can start doing maybe a little bit of math. We could reassign c to the value of two times a plus b. And so printing that, we could see the result of what happened here. So we're just gonna print the variable C and then end the line again. So building this, again, zero error, zero warnings. Running, we get our hello YouTube uh, from line seven. And then from line 15, we see that we printed to screen the result of uh, our mathematics. So int C was initially declared to be five. And now once we redeclare it to be two times A plus B, uh, it's obviously four. So we can do all of the usual operations here. So for example, we could do uh, C is equal to A divided by B or C is equal to C minus B. So all of the operations work as you might expect, but we need to be careful with division specifically for integers. So when we write an integer divided by an integer, what we're doing here is integer division. So for example, what would the output be if we do a divided by b here? So compiling and running, 
what we see is that it outputs zero. But A is one and B is two, so you might expect that it would be 0 0.5. Integer division divides the numbers and then converts the result back into an integer. If the number has a non-integer portion, for in our case that would be 0 0.5, so the 0.5, it simply throws the non-integer portion away. Then the resulting integer portion, which is us, 0, is what the code gives us back. So this unsurprisingly uh, ends up inserting uh, some strange bugs into, uh, into your code uh, if you aren't careful. Sometimes a bunch of my results uh, will come out and they'll all be zero. Uh, so as soon as I see that, the first thing I check is if I messed up uh, and did integer division somewhere I shouldn't have. The easiest way to fix this would be to, for example, insert uh, a 1.0 somewhere. So if I first did 1.0 times a here, then the top portion, 1.0 is not an integer, it's a real number, then the top portion is a real number, uh, which is called a double, in this case, times a. So the result here will not be an integer, it will actually be a double. And from there, our double will then be divided by an integer, which again, C++ will give back a real number or a double uh, instead of an integer. So doing this again, compiling, we will run. And instead of zero, now our simple fix give us, gives us back uh, 0 0.5. So this is a standard rule. If you do an operation uh, with a double and an integer together, the result will be a double. Okay, so I've been saying double a lot. What is a double? Well, we can, uh, we can declare a double. So let's declare two and then we can talk about it. So here I only put uh, one decimal place uh, in these declarations, uh, but the double should have about 15 decimal places of precision, and this is plenty for our calculations. So again, we can do all of the usual uh, operations uh, with these doubles. So let's just write out a random sequence here, e times d plus uh, e divided by d subtracted by um, Sub subtracted by d, let's say. And, th and this would just give us a number back. So here, that ends up being something around 1.5191. Uh, the console print here um, actually just uh, cut off some digits. That's not all of the digits the program would actually have access to. If we wanted more digits, we could write, for example, c out dot precision and then set that to for example 12 here and then instead the program when printing uh, to the console will give us more digits uh, for precision so definitely go ahead and play around with these operations if you have the chance and the time you can also uh, change between data types so for example here we could do c out and then wrap around this int here uh, with the variable d, which is a double. And what this is going to do is it's going to change our output uh, to an integer. Doing that, what we see here is that d, which was declared to be 6.7, converting it to an integer, it just removed uh, the non-integer portion, so the 0.7 here, and then it just printed out 6. Okay, so I'm gonna stop here uh, for now. To be honest, this script feels uh, a bit long and I don't have a feel for how many pages uh, translates uh, to how many minutes the video will be. Uh, so let's stop here. So next video, uh, the plan will be to look a bit more at operations, uh, input and output, and of course, loops. So that's it for today, everyone. I hope you liked the video. If you did, feel free to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below.